Nobody cares a button for my feelings. It's been a most unedifying visit. Nobody listens to a word, I say. There's no respect. Everyone shouts at once. It's like some frightful parliament of apes. Come on, Flippot, let's go. I can't stay here. If Madame would care for a nice... You, my girl, are nothing but a maid with far too much to say most of that impertinent. We don't need your opinion. But, Grandmother, Dorinda... There's a word for you, my boy. Buffoon. Yes, I am your grandmother, and I should know. And if I've told your father once, I've told him a hundred times. I think you're a bad lot who'll never give him anything but heartache. I think... Good Lord, the quiet ones found her voice. Sweetness and light, the sister meek and mild. But still waters run deep, they always say, and deep down, you're as bad as all the rest. Madame, no, dear, don't take this amiss. But everything you do is simply wrong. You ought to set these two a good example, as their late mother never failed to do. You spend too much. I must say it upsets me the way you go round dressed like a princess. A woman who wants just to please her husband has no business parading like a clothes horse. No, my sister, madame, and is quite And old as old for old. you, well, it's not that I don't like you, respect you, but if you were my brother, my son's wife, you'd be barred the house, spouting your endless theories about life, which no one in their right mind would accept. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps I've been too frank. No, no, Grandma. I, I'm like that. I never could conceal what's on my mind. I'm sure your Monsieur Tartuffe would be pleased. He's a good man and must be listened to. And if I have to hear a fool like you attacking him, I may get very cross. Some sanctimonious faker seizes power and I'm supposed to lie back and enjoy it? And no one is allowed the simplest pleasure without permission from this turkey cock. If what he says is anything to go by, you move and you commit a mortal sin. His buzzard's eye is always watching And like... everything he watches must be watched. He's trying to lead you up the path to heaven. And my son ought to force you all to love him. No, listen to me, grandmother. No father, no one could make me wish him well. There's only one way out of this, I tell you. I am that red-eared peasant can't but come to blows. Well, you can't deny. It's scandalous to see a stranger taken over here. A beggar who, when he came, had nothing on his feet and whose old wardrobe weren't worth sixpence. Going so far as to forget his place, lording it over us and finding fault. Uh, you all enjoy these fairy tales, I see. <laughs> In your house, no one gets a word in it. Well, it's because of Madame holding forth all day. Well, now I've got a chance to speak at last. I'm telling you, the wisest thing my son has ever done is to install Tartuffe, whom God has sent here just when he was needed to save your souls when you had gone astray. 
I don't know what you're sniggering about. If you want to laugh, go to an asylum. I'll say no more. Goodbye, my dear. I take a very dim view of all this. You won't be seeing me for quite some time. Oh, come on, flip pop. Wait up, don't go for me. Oh, my goodness me, I'll, I'll box your ears for you, you slut. Well, I'm staying put. I don't want her to start on me again. Silly old... <laughs> what a shame she isn't here to comment on your turn of phrase. She got annoyed with us for no good reason. She's clearly besotted with this tattoo. I promise you, her son is even worse. And if you saw him, you'd be appalled. But during the Troubles, he was very brave. Enhanced his reputation with the King. But ever since he's fallen for Tartuffe, he's gone around like someone in a daze. But he loves the man a hundred times as much as his wife, his son, his daughter or his mother. He pampers him. He caresses him. I'd say you couldn't be more loving to a mistress. Who sits him at the top end of the table, enjoys watching him eat enough for six. You have to serve him all the tastiest bits. And even when he burps, he says, God bless you. In short, he's mad about him. He's his hero. His slightest action is miraculous. And every word he says is like an oracle. The fact is, he's a man can spot a victim. Even his servant orders us about, gives himself airs, and preaches wild-eyed sermons, and throws away our rouge and beauty spots. <laughs> the other day, the brute found my lace bib between two pages of the Lives of the Saints and ripped it up, saying it was a crime to stain what's holy with the devil's frills. <laughs> oh, it's silly to have stayed here. You missed her lecture at the gate. <laughs> my husband's here. He hasn't seen me, and I'd rather wait for him upstairs. I'll wait and catch him here. I've really only time to say hello. Ask him about my sister's wedding, will you? Yeah. I have a feeling Tartuffe is against it and forcing him to make these long delays. It's mm. important to me as well, you know. My sister loves Belair and he loves her, but as you know, I'm in love with his He's sister. Coming. Ah, Cleant, hello. I was just on my way. Oh. I'm glad I caught you. <laughs> Nothing much out yet, is mm -hmm. there? In the uh, country? Uh, in. Um, you must excuse me just a minute. You don't mind if I find out what's been happening, put my mind at rest. Everything fine, what's everybody up to? Are they well? Mm, two days ago, the mistress had a fever and a strange nagging headache all day long. And Tartuffe? Tartuffe's in the best of health. Oh. Big, fat and blooming with his nice red mouth. Poor boy. <laughs> she felt quite nauseous all evening mm -hmm. and never touched a mouthful of a dinner. <sighs> a headache was so painful. And Tartuffe? He sat in front of her and ate alone, oh. swallowing, most religiously, a brace of partridge followed by a leg of mutton. Oh, poor boy. <laughs> she never closed her eyes all night. Mm -hmm. She had hot flushes which kept her awake. We had to sit up with her till the dawn. And that too? He was struck down by a kind of pleasantly weary feeling <laughs> and repaired directly from the table to his room, <laughs> where he collapsed into his nice warm bed and slumbered dreamlessly until the morning. Poor boy. <laughs> we finally persuaded her to be bled. Ah. And she felt better at once. And tattoos. Put his bravest face on it. Uh. And bracing himself against the blows of fate mm -hmm. to make up for the blood the mistress lost, drank four large tumblers full of wine for breakfast. Ah. <laughs> Poor boy. <laughs> at any oh. rate, they're now quite well. Uh. And I must go upstairs and tell the mistress how interested you've been in her recovery. All right. Oh. Oh. She's making fun of you. Well, you must have noticed. And I don't want to make you angry, but... Oh. Quite frankly, it's no more than you deserve. I've never heard of such grotesque behaviour. How can this man have cast a spell on you? How can you talk about him? You don't know him. Uh, certainly, I don't know him. But to guess the kind of man he is, you only need to... No, 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 no. 
You would be captivated by him, and your ecstasy would know no bounds. You see, this is a man who... Well, a man, in fact, to sum up, a man. You listen to him and you enjoy the deepest peace of mind. And see the world for what it is, a dunghill. Oh, yes. I've got changed under his instruction. He teaches me to cast aside a fiction and clear my mind of any trace of love. Now I could watch my mother and my brother, my wife and children die and not give that. I see. Mm -hmm. He's a humanitarian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you'd only been there when we met, you'd feel as warm towards him as I do. He'd arrive every day in church and kneel meekly right next to me and never fail to capture the whole congregation's notice with the enthusiasm of his praying. He'd groan and sigh and I'd throw himself around and humbly kiss the ground time and again. And when I left, he'd hurry on ahead to hand me the holy water at the door. His servant was like his... Mirror image told me about him, who he is. His poverty. I gave him money, but he, restrained as ever, always tried to give some of it back to me. Too much, he'd say. I don't need half this much. I don't see why I should deserve your pity. And, well, I'd refuse to take it. He'd go and share it out among the poor. In front of me. Finally, I was inspired to bring him here. Since when, it seems that all of us have flourished. Oh, he disapproves of everything, of course, and keeps a very close watch on my wife, just to preserve my honor. Gives me names of all the people who make eyes at her. <laughs> oh, he's far more jealous than I ever was. You've no idea the, the fervor of the man. He thinks the slightest failing is a sin. He's scandalized by what we hardly noticed. <laughs> Recently. <laughs> he was full of self-reproach for having caught a flea while he was praying and killed it with excessive savagery. Now, what is this? <laughs> making fun of me? Huh? Or is it true you don't make a distinction between hypocrisy and piety? Yeah. And do you really class them both together? Respect the mask as highly as the face? Consider sham the equal of sincerity? Yes, yes. As I see, you're a most distinguished genius. Uniquely brilliant and uniquely wise compared with whom the rest of us are fools. No, <laughs> I am not a most distinguished genius. No, no, no. But there's one thing I do know how to do, that's tell the difference between true and false. And while there's no one I approve of more than genuinely religious men, and nothing nobler or more uplifting in the world than the enthusiasm of true belief. Equally, there's nothing more disgraceful than specious fervor laid on with a trowel. And no one worse than those downright imposters, mm. those career mystics, businessmen on their knees, trying to notch up credit and prestige by screwing up their eyes and throwing fits. <laughs> Is that all? Well, no. Well, perhaps you'll excuse me. Uh, no, uh, just one minute, please. I'll change the subject. You have promised Valère your daughter's hand. That's right. Yes, and you'd even given them a date? Yes. Yes, then why have you postponed the wedding? Who oh, knows? Have you perhaps changed your mind? Possibly. Are you going to break your word? I didn't say that. I just can't imagine what could prevent you honouring your promise. Ah, depends. What's all this evasiveness? Valère has asked me to see you about it. Oh, that is nice. Yes. But what am I to tell him? Yeah, tell him what you like. Yes, but then I have to know what you have in mind. What are your plans? To do God's will. Oh, be serious, will you? Look, Valère has had your promise. Will you keep it? Goodbye. I fear the worst for his engagement. I have to warn him what's going on. What are you doing? 
Nothing. I'm only checking no one's here. I wouldn't like us to be overheard. Well, Marianne, I've always appreciated your obedience, and you've always been very dear to me. Well, I'm very grateful, Father, that you love me. Well said, my dear. And if I am to continue, your only worry need be to provide me with what I want. I take a pride in it. Good. <laughs> what do you think of our guest, Tartuffe? Me? You. Now be careful what you say. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say anything you like. How very sensible. Well then, my dear, why don't you say, he's wholly excellent. He's reached your heart. And it would make you very happy if I agreed to let him marry you. Hmm? <laughs> what is it? Sorry? What? Don't think I caught what you just said. <laughs> what do you mean? Who is it that you wanted me to say had reached my heart and it would make me happy if I agreed to let you marry <laughs> whom? <laughs> but look, it wouldn't. Not at all. Why should you want to make me tell a lie? What I want is for it to be the truth. <laughs> That's my decision. What more do you want? You mean yeah, you want... Dear, I intend to make Tartuffe a member of this family. He's going to be a husband. It's all settled. And since I have the power to insist... Oh. What are you doing? Eavesdropping again? Suffering from chronic curiosity? Well, I heard somebody mentioning this marriage. And I couldn't decide if it was rumour with some basis in fact or pure invention. The one obvious thing was it was nonsense. <laughs> you, you find it unbelievable. Oh, so much so, I wouldn't believe it even if you told me. I know. You're telling us a fairy story. I'm telling you exactly what will happen. Rubbish. Now, this is serious, Marianne. Get on with you. Your father doesn't mean it. He's joking. Will you listen? No, no good. We don't believe you. I'm starting to get annoyed. All right, we do believe you then. In which case, shame on you. Well, you look quite normal, that big beard in the middle of your face. And yet you mean you're mad enough. Now, that's enough! Now listen, you've taken certain liberties today which I don't like. One little bit. I warn you. Let's try and keep our temper, shall we, sir? I think this is some <laughs> elaborate joke. Your daughter isn't cut out for a bigot. And he should have other things on his mind. And anyway, what possible advantage could such a marriage bring you? <laughs> and why choose a beggar for your son-in-law with all your money? If he has nothing, all the more reason to admire him. Hmm? His poverty is honest poverty. It lifts him higher than the great. He's poor because of voluntary renunciation and his indifference to temporal things and his commitment to eternity. <sighs> I'm your father, and I know what's best. It's true, I promised you to Valère, but he's been seen more than once playing cards, and I suspect he may be a free thinker. I haven't seen a lot of him in church. Why should he go exactly when you do? Well, he's not like others, just there to be seen. I don't need your opinion. All I know is heaven smiles on Tartuva, and that is an asset second to none. This marriage will fulfill your wildest dreams, a series of sweet pleasures. You will live together faithfully in love, like two true children. Like two turtle doves. <laughs> you'll never quarrel. And you'll find you'll be able to turn him into anything you please. A cuckold, for example. Which is all she'll want to turn him into. That's in my wisdom. It's written I... all over him. It's in his stars. Not all your daughter's virtue could resist. Will you stop it? interrupting? Shut up and keep your nose out of other people's business. I'm only trying to help. Well, don't. <laughs> be quiet. It's only because we love you. I don't want to be loved. Even so, I want to love you. <sighs> you see, your reputation is important to me. I hate to see you lay yourself open to general ridicule. Shut up! How could I let you contract such a marriage in all conscience? Will you be quiet, snake up? I thought you were supposed to be religious. So I am, but all this... Jabber is making my blood boil, and I insist you hold your tongue. Certainly. I won't say another word. But you 
can't stop me thinking. Think as much as you like. Just concentrate on not speaking to me. All right. Oh, Don't talk. In my wisdom, after mature consideration. You are a not going to learn to speak. I'm not exactly very pretty. Tattoo is off the side of Notre Dame. Even if you could find no sympathy with all of his gifts. Oh, this is your lucky day. If I was in her place, I'm telling you, no man would marry me against me will. Or soon after the wedding, he'd find out there's one way women can revenge themselves. I see you're just ignoring what I say. What's the matter? I'm not speaking to you. Oh, well, what are you doing then? Talking to myself. <laughs> I see. I've never heard such insolence. She deserves a good smack. In my wisdom, after mature consideration. My dear, you must agree to my suggestion. The husband I have chosen for you is... Speak up. Well, I have nothing else to say. Surely there's something. No, I don't feel like it. But I'm waiting. Well, you think I'm a fool? You must agree to my suggestion and your complete acceptance of my choice. I will be seen dead with such a husband. Oh, that girl's a pest! I can't put up with her without surrendering to sinful rage! I really can't go on with our discussion. Her insolence has goaded me to frenzy. I need some air to calm me down a bit. Oh. Well, uh, have you lost your tongue? What am I supposed to play your part in this? How could you let somebody propose such an idiotic plan without saying a single word against it? Well, what would I say? A father's power is absolute. Anything to stave off a threat like this. What? Tell him you can't love a second hand. Tell him you're marrying for your sake, not his. Since you're the centre of attention here, it's you, not him, your husband must appeal to. And if he thinks Tartuffe is so attractive, he's quite welcome to marry him himself. I've never had the strength to raise a protest against father's authority. I admit it. Uh, just a minute. Valera's has made his move. Tell me, do you love him or do you not? How can you ask me such a question, Doreen? How can you be so unfair to my love? Haven't I always confided in you and told you 50 times how much I love him? How do I know all that was true? Doreen, it's very wrong of you to doubt it. You know I've never hidden my true feelings. So then you love him? Yes! Passionately. By all appearances, he loves you too. I think he does. And both of you are most impatient to get married. Yes, we are. Then what do you plan to do about this business? Well, if they force me, I'm going to kill myself. That's wonderful. Mm. I hadn't thought of that. Of course, if you die, you'll avoid all these problems. What a brilliant way out! Oh, it makes me angry to have to listen to this sort of talk. Well, there's no need to get in a huff, Doreen. Sure. You have no sympathy for people's suffering. I have no sympathy for empty threats or crumbling without putting up a fight. But what do you expect? I can't help being timid. But perseverance should be part of love. And I have persevered. I love Valère. Isn't it up to him to win my hand from father? What? When father is this clown who is utterly besotted with Tartuffe and breaks his firm agreement on the marriage, you think the blame should be put on Valère? Would it be right to show by flat refusal or wild defiance how much I'm in love? However fine he is, do you think I should abandon my sex's modesty, my daughter's duty? Or do you think I should publicise my love? No. No, I wouldn't want that. Now I see. 
You want to marry Tartuve after all. And now I stop to think I was quite wrong to try to dissuade you. What right had I to quarrel with your wishes? He's a most eligible match, is that Monsieur Tartuve? Oh, mm -hmm. There's nothing to be sneezed at, is there? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't deny Monsieur Tartuffe is a man who knows his backside from his elbow. To be his better half, that is no small honour. He's generally admired. He's of good birth. At least he says he is. Sort of well built. Those red ears and that nice florid face. Oh, the only danger is you'll be too happy. Oh, God. Can you imagine the elation to be the wife of such a handsome man? Stop it, please. Find some way to help me. I give up now. I'll do whatever you say. No, no. A daughter must obey her father, even if he wants to marry her to an ape. You're very lucky. Why are you complaining? You'll take the coach back to his little town. You'll meet all his uncles and his cousins. You're certain to enjoy their conversation. You'll be taken to all the best addresses and welcomed there by all the dignitaries. The bailiff's wife, the wife of the JP. They'll get out their spare canvas chair for you. Then there's the village fate to look forward to. And there'll be a ball with a great orchestra consisting of a pair of bagpipers. And as a special treat, an organ grinder. <laughs> then there's those amusing punch and judy shows. And if your husband... Do you want to kill me? Please, just find some way to help me. You mustn't ask me that. Please, Doreen. No, must go ahead now. You deserve it. Doreen. No. Nope. After all I've told you. Nothing doing. Tartuffe's your man. You want to escape him now? You know, I've always told you everything. Now, please help me. No. You're going to be tartuffed. I see. Well, since you're unmoved by my fate, You'd best abandon me to my despair and let it be my ready consolation. I know there's one sure way out of my troubles. I'll try not to be angry. In spite of everything, I can't help feeling sorry for you. If I'm to undergo this cruel martyrdom you see, Doreen, mm -hmm. I feel sure it's going to be the death of me. But don't worry. I'm sure there's some clever way we can... But here's Valer himself. I have just heard the most extraordinary piece of news. What's that? That you are marrying Tartuffe. It's true. My father wants me to. Your father? Has changed his mind. He's just this minute told me. What? Seriously? Yes. Seriously. He seems determined I should marry him. And what do you intend to do now? I don't know. Well, there's an honest answer. You don't know? No. No? What's your advice? Oh, my advice is to accept. That's your advice? It is. You mean it? Well, certainly I mean it. It's a handsome offer, well worth your attention. Well, then I'd better follow your advice. I don't think that would be too hard for you. No harder than it was for you to give it. Well, I did so in the hope of giving you pleasure. Whereas I shall now follow it to please you. Well, let's see how they can get out of this. <laughs> is this what love is? Was it just deceit when you used to say... I'd rather not discuss that, please. You have just said quite openly that I should marry the husband I've been offered. I'm announcing that I intend to do so following your excellent advice. You shouldn't use my stand as an excuse. You'd already decided. And you're grasping at this silly pretext to justify breaking your word. It's true. You put it very well. I'm sure you never really loved me. <sighs> well, you're entitled to your opinion. Yes, I'm entitled. And I may manage to forestall your plan by taking my proposal somewhere else. I wouldn't be surprised. You're so good looking. 
God. Let's leave my looks out of it, shall we? Well, they can't be that good as you've just yourself demonstrated. But there is somebody who feels kindly for me. And now I'm free, won't be ashamed to remedy my loss. Your loss seems far from great. I'm sure you'll have no difficulty finding consolation. Well, you may be confident I'll do my best. Being abandoned puts us on our mettle. We must make every effort to forget the person who's responsible. And even if we can't quite succeed, we must pretend to. Oh, to show oneself in love with someone faithless would be the most unpardonable weakness. What an exalted, lofty sentiment. Well, I don't think anyone could disapprove. I suppose you think I should keep my love for you alive and burning endlessly. Oh. What do you fall into someone else's arms without the right to find some new allegiance for the heart you've rejected? That sounds the best idea. I wish you'd done it already. <laughs> Is that what you wish? It is. Right. I'm not staying here to be insulted. I'll do you a good turn by leaving. Fine. You should at least remember that it's you who's driving me to this extreme. I will. And that this plan is only following your example. Following my example? Yes. Well then. That's enough. I'm leaving, like you said. I'm pleased to hear it. This time it's for good. Wonderful. What? You what? Did you say something? Me? You're imagining things. Right then. I'm off. Goodbye. Goodbye. Monsieur Belair! Have you gone off your red? I only left you this long to see how far you'd go. Monsieur Belair! What do you want, Lorraine? Come back. No, I'm too upset. It's what she wanted, so don't try to talk me out of it. Oh, stop it. No, look, it's all settled. No, I can't bear the sight of me. He's only leaving because I'm here. I'd better go instead. Now it's her. Where are you off to? Let go. Come back. There's no good to rent. I see my presence is a torture to her. The best course is for me to free her of it now. What, again? Oh, damned if I'm going to let you. Stop this nonsense and come here. Both of you. What do you want? What are you trying to do? Bring you together and get you out of this. Have you gone mad? Starting this kind of row? Didn't you hear the way she spoke to me? <laughs> And you? Have you gone mad? Losing your temper? Didn't you see the way he treated me? You're both a stew. Oh. All she wants is to be yours. I know that's true. He loves no one but you. All he wants is to marry you. I'll stake me life on him. Well, then why did you give me that advice? Why did you ask me for it? I'd like to know. Oh, you're both mad. Here, each give me a hand. Come on. My hand? What for? Oh. And you as well. What good will that do? <laughs> oh my God. Come here quick. You both love each other far more than you think. Well, don't be so grudging. Give us a friendly look. Of course, it's well known lovers are quite mad. You must admit I have some ground for complaint. It wasn't very nice of you to take such pleasure in upsetting me. Aren't you the most ungrateful man alive? Uh, no, could could we what... leave this discussion for the minute and concentrate on fending off this wedding? Tell us what we should do. Try everything. Your father can't be serious with this nonsense. All the same. You should react to his ravings by giving an impression of consent. So that in an emergency, it will be easier for you to spin out the engagement. 
The key thing in all this is playing for time. You could develop sudden illnesses to cause delay, or, or come across bad omens, an argument with someone who's then died, a broken mirror, dreams of muddy water. Also, I'd say, to be on the safe side, it's an idea not to be seen together. So, don't waste time. And get your friends to start pressuring him to keep his promise to you. Goodbye. To tell the truth, whatever they may try, it's you I'm counting on. Well, I can't answer for what my father wants, oh. but I know I'll never belong to anyone but you. That's a great comfort. So whatever Mothers they say... can't get enough of all this blather. Now, will you go? Just one thing. No more chat. Now. You go this way. And you. <laughs> go that. <laughs> Whew. I'm going to think of something, don't you worry. No fear of authority is going to stop me. And if it does, may I be struck down now, treated with the contempt I deserve. Oh, please. There's no need to exaggerate. Well, it's only a suggestion of your father's. Not every resolution is carried out. There's many a slip. I'll oh, scotch this swine's pit. There's two words I'm going to whisper in his ear. Now, take it easy. Let your stepmother deal with him as she's dealing with your father. She has some kind of influence on Tartuffe. She can say what she likes and he's always indulgent. Perhaps he's even smitten with her. Hope to God he is. That'll be fun. In fact, she's summoned Amir on your behalf. She wants to sound him out about this marriage that's worrying you so much. She wants to find out how he feels about it and explain to him the difficulties it would cause. His servant says, I can't see him, he's praying. But he'll be down soon, so please, go now and let me wait for him. Why shouldn't I just be there while they're talking? No, you must be alone. I wouldn't say a word to you. You're joking. We all know what a short fuse you're on. That's just the way to ruin everything. Now, off you go. No, I can watch without losing my temper. Oh, you are so annoying. Go on, here he comes. Go on. Grazie plena dominus tecum benedicta tui mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventri tui Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, or... My hair shirt, Laurent. Please put it away next to my birch. And... I want you to pray for heaven's eternal guidance. Oh, if there are visitors, tell them I'll be at the prison, distributing what few small coins I have. Posturing humbug. Yes, what do you want? To tell you, my Oh, my goodness, before you say another word, take this. What for? Cover your breasts. I shouldn't have to be exposed to them. That kind of thing does damage to the soul and can give rise to guilty thoughts. You're very vulnerable to temptation. I didn't know that flesh made such a big impression on your senses. I can't see why you should get so steamed up. I mean, I'm not so easy to arouse. For instance, I could look at you stark naked and not be tempted by a single inch. Oh. If you don't show a little modesty, I'll be obliged to leave you. No, you won't. It's me who's leaving, so you can calm down. The only thing I have to say is this. Madame is on her way. She'd like a word. By all means. Mm -hmm. That's cheered him up. I think I must be right. <laughs> Will she be long? <coughs> I think that's her now. <coughs> yes, it is. I'll leave you to it. 
May God in all his infinite goodness grant you perpetual health in body and in soul and bless you. That's his humblest suppliant's prayer. I'm very grateful for your pious wishes. Oh. Sit down. Let's make ourselves more comfortable. I hope you're feeling quite recovered now. Oh, yes, thank you. The fever didn't last. My prayers are scarcely worthy of attracting grace from on high, but I must say their sole object has been your speedy convalescence. I think you show too much desire for my welfare. Your health is very precious. To bring it back, I'd sacrifice my own. That's taking Christian charity to its limits. <laughs> I do appreciate your kindness, really. I do far less for you than you deserve. I've been wanting to talk to you in private. I'm glad that we're alone together here. Yes, I'm delighted. It is such a pleasure to be alone with you for the first time. An opportunity I've often prayed for. I just thought we could have a conversation in which you'd feel you might confide in me. And I want nothing better than the charm, the privilege of bearing my soul to you, and of assuring you that the protests I made against your visitors were nothing personal. They were prompted by my zeal and by an impulse. So I assume. I know my welfare was your main concern. Oh, of course it was. And such was my desire. <laughs> that. Hurt. <laughs> it's just over eagerness. <laughs> I never meant to hurt you. I'd much rather. What are you doing? I'm feeling your dress. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it silky? <laughs> oh, please don't. I'm very ticklish. What workmanship. It's wonderful the things they do these days. My word, I've never seen anything like that. I'm sure, but can we get back to the point? I've heard my husband wants to break his promise and give his daughter to you. Is that true? He said something about it, but quite frankly, that's not the happiness I'm pining for. All my desires are concentrated on a different set of wonderful attractions. You mean you have no time for earthly matters? My heart is not entirely made of stone. I know your aspirations are towards heaven, but down here, nothing can distract your will. <laughs> The love we feel for the eternal beauties doesn't preclude a love for what is temporal. And our senses can easily succumb under the spell of God's perfect creations. His glories are reflected in your sex. But in your case, it's much more than that. He's revealed his rarest wonders and lavished such beauties on you. We're dazzled, we're carried away, and I can't look at you, you perfect creature, without admiring the Almighty in you, struck to the heart with blazing love in front of God's loveliest self-portrait. Oh. At first I was afraid this secret passion was a cunning subterfuge of the Prince of Darkness. And I even determined to avoid you, thinking that you might jeopardize my salvation. But then finally I realized, my sweet beauty, in such a feeling there could be no guilt. It could be reconciled with purity. And that's when I surrendered myself to it. I confess. It is very bold of me to dare to offer you my love like this, but I'm relying wholly on your kindness rather than on my own unworthiness. My hopes, my well-being, my peace of mind are in your hands. My suffering or my bliss depend on you. 
and only you can make me happy or unhappy just as you choose. Well, that's a very gallant declaration. If, to be honest, somewhat unexpected. It seems to me you ought to have reflected a little and held back from such a step. A man whose reputation as a saint... Oh, why should a saint be any the less human? Confronted with your heavenly attractions, a man just gives away. How can he reflect? Oh, it may seem strange for me to say such things, but after all, madame, I'm not an angel. And if my declaration is blameworthy, the real culprit is your enchanting beauty. <laughs> Ever since I first saw its superhuman radiant glory, you have ruled my heart. The indescribable tenderness of your divine expression broke down my resistance, overcame all my fasting prayers and weeping, and concentrated all my hopes on you. I'm only voicing what you must have guessed. Hmm? When I so often looked at you and sighed, to show some favor to your unworthy servant's tribulations. If you would deign to stoop down to my level and out of kindness offer me relief, delicious prodigy, I guarantee my eternal unparalleled devotion. <gasps> your reputation would be safe with me. You'd run no risk of notoriety. Are these libertines the ladies so admire at court? Are ostentatious and loud-mouthed, always bragging of conquests, of whose favors no detail is too intimate to reveal? No people like us know how to love discreetly and how to keep it permanently secret. Our own concern for our good character acts as a guarantee to those we love. And once you've given way, you'll find we offer love without scandal, pleasure without fear. Ooh. I've let you have your say. Mm. And your eloquence is unambiguous enough, I think. Mm -hmm. But aren't you worried that I might decide to tell my husband about this proposal? And that if he were told of your hopes, it might do damage to his friendship for you. <sighs> I know that you're too generous for that, and that you will forgive my recklessness. The violence of a passion which offends you, you will exonerate as human weakness. And, uh, bearing in mind your looks, you will acknowledge that I'm not blind and men are flesh and blood. Oh. Others might take another line, perhaps, but I prefer to exercise discretion. I shall say nothing of this to my husband. Oh. But in return, I'd like something from you. I want you to support quite openly, without beating about the bush, Valère's marriage to Marianne, oh. and to give up your unfair influence, <laughs> and your desire to enrich yourself with someone else's money. No! And no! Yes! Oh! I was behind there and I heard everything! Ah! It's as if heaven had led me there to crush the hubris of a treacherous enemy, and give me the potential for revenge against his insolent hypocrisy. The means to disabuse my father and expose this monster's attempt to seduce you. No, dummy! It's enough he should improve and try to be worthy of my reprieve. I've given my promise. Please don't make me break it. 
It isn't in my nature to make trouble. A woman laughs at foolishness like this and wouldn't dream of worrying her husband. You have your reasons for that attitude and I have mine for disagreeing with it. I think to let him off would be a joke. Me? No, please, I have to trust my judgment. I couldn't be happier and you won't persuade me to forgo the pleasures of revenge. I have what I need to conclude this business. And here's the man who put my mind at rest. Now, listen, Father. This should cheer you up. Something's just happened which may startle you. It's a reward for all your kindnesses, acknowledged by this man with a fat payment. He's just been showing his great love for you, which doesn't even draw the line at making a cuckold of you. I've just caught him here making a proposition to your wife. You know, her gentleness and her discretion, she wanted very much to keep it a secret, but I just can't indulge this shamelessness. I think it would be quite wrong not to tell you. It's true. I don't think one should ever ruin a husband's peace of mind for trivial reasons. Honour is not affected. It's enough for us to know how to defend ourselves. That's how I feel. And if I'd had the slightest influence on you, you'd have kept your mouth shut. Yes, brother. I am guilty. I am evil. A wicked sinner sunk in iniquity. The greatest criminal that ever lived. Each second of my life is stained with filth. It's one huge, seething rubbish heap of vice. And heavens clearly seized upon this chance to humiliate me as a punishment. I wouldn't have the arrogance to deny whatever sin it is that I'm accused of. So fuel your anger. Believe what they say and throw me on the street like some delinquent. However great the shame you pile upon me, it cannot be as much as I deserve. You wretch. <laughs> How dare you fabricate this lie and try to blot his purity and virtue. <laughs> what? what? You mean you... Be quiet, you but pest! No, let him speak. It's wrong of you to blame him. You'd do better to believe what he says. Why should you favor me in this dispute? After all, how do you know what I might be capable of? What? You trust mere show? You think I'm better just because I seem so? No, no. You're letting yourself be tricked by appearances. And I'm sorry to say, I am not at all the man I'm thought to be. Everybody takes me for a good man, but the simple truth is, I am entirely worthless. Come on, my boy. Speak up! Call me a traitor! A lost soul! A degenerate! 
a thief, a murderer, crush me with vile names. I won't deny them. I've deserved them all. And on my knees, I welcome this disgrace in expiation of my life of crime. You go too far. Aren't you ashamed, you wretch? You mean you're taking him by death? Beckwart! Please, brother, give me that. Stop! Move, oh, baby, stop! This is too much. Nowhere. I'll break your arms. For God's sake, brother, please don't lose your temper. Oh, my God. Leave him be. If necessary, I'll ask you to forgive him on my knees. You can't be serious. You see how kind he is, you lapse. What? Silence! I know your motives for attacking him. All of you hate him. And I've had to watch my wife and children and my servants hang him. No method is too brazen when it comes to driving this good person from my house. Well, the more you try to get rid of him, the better ways I find to keep him here. And to annihilate my family's arrogance. I'm going to give my daughter to him soon. You're going to force her to accept his hand? Yes, wretch. And to spite you this very evening. Oh, I defy you all. I'm going to show you that I give the orders here. And I'll be obeyed. So sit back down and sit this minute. Why, I'm down on your knees and ask him to forgive you. Oh, me? Me! Ask this unscrupulous face! I refuse you! Ruffian and insult him! A stick! Bring me my stick! Yeah! And you! Let go! Get out of my house! Ah! Oh! Ah! I'm leaving. You get out now! Jailbird. I hereby disinherit you! The only thing I give you is my curse! What a way to insult a man. It hurts when people try to blacken me in your eyes. I don't. Just to think of the ingratitude is such a cruel torment to my soul. The horror of it. Oh. Ah! I can't speak. Oh. My heart is so heavy. Look, this will be the death of oh, my... God. You louse! <laughs> I'm sorry I restrained myself. I should have knocked you senseless there. <laughs> Oh, calm yourself now, brother. Don't be so upset. Brother? disruptions. I know I've been a cause of trouble here. I can see no alternative to my leaving. You can't be serious. They hate me here. They're trying to make you doubt my integrity. So what? 
Do you think I'm going to listen to them? They won't give up attacking, that's for sure. And accusations which you now reject eventually perhaps may take their toll. But, oh, brother, you know a wife can easily delude her husband. No, never. If never, I were to leave no, no, here no, forthwith, no. they'd have no grounds for these attacks, so let no, me... No, you must stay. My life depends on it. Well, in that case, I'll have to sacrifice myself. No. And yet, what? No. We'll say no more. Oh. I know what's necessary. What? Honor is a fragile plant, and our friendship obliges me to prevent this rumor and suspicion by avoiding your wife. I won't no. be... I defy them all. You'll spend time with her. My greatest pleasure is to make them angry. I want you to be seen with her. Constantly. To show them what I think, I'll make you my sole heir. <laughs> and waste no time in handing over all my worldly goods. <clears throat> You're my friend. You'll be my son-in-law. Dearly to me, my father and my own son, my wife, and my relations. Won't you please <laughs> accept my offer? Well. Draft the papers and let that jealous laugh gag on their own spot. Pater noster quaes in celi sanctificator nomen tuam ad veniat raniam tuam fiat voluntas tua sicut in celi et in terra panem nostrum quotidianum de nobis hodie et miti nobis debita nostra sicut et nos miti mus debitoribus nostris et me nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Everyone's discussing it, believe me, and the verdict's not to your advantage. Mm. I'm pleased to have this opportunity to give you my opinion in a few words. Mm. I don't propose to get into the details. Forget all that. Let's uh -huh. assume the worst. Mm. Suppose Dami has behaved badly uh. and falsely accused you. Mm -hmm. Would it not be Christian to overlook the sin and to suppress any desire for vengeance? Now, ought you to allow a son to be driven out of his father's house because of a dispute with you. I tell you frankly, I repeat, people of every class are shocked by this. If you take my advice, you'll make peace here and not let matters be pushed to extremes. Forget your anger. Offer it up to God. And reconcile a father with his son. As far as I'm concerned, I would like nothing better. I have no animus against him. I forgive him. I don't blame him at all. I would do anything I could for him. But from God's point of view, it's just not on. And if he comes back, I shall have to leave. After his unprecedented behavior, any contact between us would invite scandal. 
God knows what might not be inferred. I'd be accused of pure expedience, and everyone would say that out of guilt I was pretending to forgive my enemy, that I was afraid of him and hoped I could in some clandestine way pay for his silence. This weak concern for what people might think surely can't be allowed to override the majesty of doing good. No, no. Let's follow God's commandments every time and not confuse ourselves with other concepts. I have already explained that I forgive him and therefore am following God's commandments. But after this scandal and today's insults, there's no commandment says I have to live with him. And is there a commandment says you should acquiesce in this mad whim of his father's and accept his gift to you of a fortune on which justice must tell you you have no claim? Those who know me would never dream of thinking that this is a result of my self-seeking. The riches of this world have very little appeal to me. I'm not one to be dazzled by their illusory glow. And if Orgon wants me to have this gift and I decide to take it, it will only be because otherwise, to be honest, I'd be worried in case all of that money were to fall into the wrong hands and end up with people who've used their share for evil purposes rather than keeping it as I intend to. Uh, for God's glory and the welfare of my neighbor. Oh, spare yourself these dainty inhibitions. Let him come into his inheritance at his own risk and don't distress yourself. Just think, better for him to squander it than for you to be charged with cheating him. You must excuse me now. It's half past six. And I'm required upstairs to fulfill certain religious duties, much as I hate to leave you. God give me patience. Please, sir, help us to help her. She's in a dreadful state. And this arrangement her father's fixed up for this evening has driven her to despair. Is here. Ah, oh, good. <clears throat> I'm glad I found you all together. Now, uh, now here's something uh, which should raise a smile. There's contract. You must know what it's about. God knows how painful this is. And for his sake, by anything that's capable of touching your heart, Relax your father's right a little. Exempt my love from having to obey you. Don't impose this harsh law and so reduce me to wish to God that I were not your daughter. And please, don't ruin my life for me, father. This life you gave me. If you must forbid me to belong to the man I love, and thwart the hopes that I have been allowed to cherish. At least, I beg you, on my knees, be kind, and don't condemn me to belong to a man I loathe. Don't exercise your will on me, and drive me to do something desperate. No, I'm not going to let myself give way. I have nothing against your feeling for him. Display it all you like. Give him your money, and if that's not enough, give him mine as well. I'd happily agree it's yours. But can't you just draw the line as offering him my body? Let me use up my sad remaining days in the austere enclosure of a convent. Oh, I see. You're one of those who turns religious at the first setback to your amorous plans. On your feet! The more repulsive you find him, the more improving it will be for you. Use this marriage to mortify your senses. Now, that's all. I don't want any more nagging. But what if she and doesn't... Shut up! My judge, you're going to me! I'm not going to forbid it! If you'd allow just one word of advice. Yes! Your advice is always admirable. Well argued, and I do value it greatly. But you won't mind if this time I ignore it. I don't know what to say about all this. I'm staggered by your blindness. 
You must be infatuated and obsessed with him to overlook what's happened here today. Seems believing, with all due respect. <laughs> I know how indulgent you are towards my son, and that you were afraid to contradict him when he tried playing that trick on the poor boy. You were too calm to be believable. You would have looked a good deal more upset. <laughs> Need we react quite so ferociously when someone just declares his love for us? Are blazing eyes and spitting out insults the only possible response to it? <laughs> My way is just to laugh at these approaches. I get no pleasure out of melodrama. I think a chilly and discreet refusal is as effective a rebuff as any. Well, I know my mind and I'm not changing it. Again, I'm staggered by this curious weakness. But how would it affect your unbelief if I could show you we were telling the truth? Show me. Yes. Rubbish. Suppose I found a way to show you beyond all doubt. Nonsense. What a man. Won't you answer me at least? I don't ask that you take our word for it. Suppose I found a place where you could see and hear quite clearly. Then what would you have to say about this good man? Well, in that case, I'd, uh, no, I'd say nothing because it couldn't happen. This delusion has lasted for too long, and I'm tired of being accused of lying. It's high time I gave myself the satisfaction of showing you everything we've said is true. All right. I'll take you at your word. Let's see you keep your promise. Bring him downstairs. He's coming. He might not be so easy to catch out. No. In love, deceit is easy. Vanity leads people to fool themselves. Bring him to me. And you two better go. Get under the table. Quite important. You're well hidden. Go uh, under that table. Oh, what? God! <laughs> Do what you're told. I have my plan. You'll see. Come on, get under it. Uh, when you're there, keep quiet and make sure he doesn't see you. Uh, I must say, this is all very silly. And I can't wait to see you prove your point. I don't believe you have any complaints. <clears throat> you mustn't be surprised if I sound strange. Mm -hmm. Or be at all shocked. <sighs> Whatever I say, remember, I have promised to convince you mm -hmm. and must be given free mm -hmm. reign. Mm -hmm. I shall coax. Since I'm reduced to this, this hypocrite to take his mask off. And I'll only stop when you acknowledge you were wrong. <laughs> so things will go as far as you allow them. It's up to you to interrupt his ardor when you consider things have gone far enough. Protect your wife and don't expose me to any more than you need to be convinced. It's your business and you're in charge. So me. Here he comes! He's uh. there! Mind he doesn't see you! I'm told you asked to see me in this room. Yes. There's a secret I must tell you. But before I do, would you please close that door? and make sure no one's likely to surprise us. <laughs> I, 
We don't want a repeat of what just happened for anything. I've never been so shocked. Dami gave me a dreadful fright on your behalf. And as you saw, I tried to calm him down and frustrate his intentions. It's true. I was so worried it never occurred to me to contradict his story. But, thank God, for that very reason, things turned out much better and less dangerously. Your reputation soon dispelled the storm. My husband couldn't think badly of you. And to show his contempt for crude suspicions, he wants us to spend lots of time together. And that's why I can be alone with you here now, without any fear of being judged. And what allows me to reveal to you what I should perhaps keep back a little longer that I'm prepared to entertain your suit. <gasps> I'm uh, not quite sure I follow you, madame. Just now you gave a very different answer. Well, if my refusal put you off, you must know very little about women. You're no good at interpreting what's meant by such an obviously weak defense. On these occasions, modesty is bound to be in conflict with our tender feelings. However right yielding to love may feel, it's always slightly shaming to admit it. At first, we fight against it. But the way we do so is a sign of our surrender. Our voice, for virtue's sake, protesting feebly against our instincts, gives the kind of no which promises you everything. <laughs> well. That's a pretty damning confession, I suppose. I haven't paid much heed to modesty. <laughs> but since it's in the open now at last, would I have tried so hard to silence Dami? I ask you, would I have so quietly listened to that long declaration of your love? Would I have taken it the way I did unless something about it gave me pleasure? And when I tried to blackmail you myself, not to accept this newly arranged wedding. What did my urgency suggest to you? If not that you now meant a lot to me, and that this proposed marriage would upset me, by at the very least making me share a love I wanted for myself alone. To hear such words from such a lovely mouth is exquisitely pleasurable, madame. Mm. Their honey sends unprecedented sweetness flowing in long drafts through my entire system. My main concern is to be fortunate enough to pleasure you. <clears throat> and my greatest blessing will be to fulfill your desires. But forgive me if I take the liberty of casting some small doubt on my good fortune. What you say might be a straightforward trick to make me break off this impending marriage. And to be brutally honest, I shan't trust these delicious suggestions you have made until I get a taste of what I crave. <coughs> well, surely you don't have to move quite so fast and exhaust all the possibilities in one go. 
to make such an intimate confession to you practically killed me. And now I find it's not enough for you. You mean you won't be satisfied until this thing has gone as far as it can go? An undeserving man can never quite rely on hope. And conversation's not a firm basis for love. You see, I don't think I deserve your kindness. I can't accept my boldness has paid off. I won't believe in it. Not until you find some realistic method to convince me. Oh, oh God. <laughs> now you're behaving like a tyrant and plunging me into a strange confusion. Ah! Your love has taken passion and control. Your desires are violently demanding. Is there no way out? Won't you give a girl a breathing space? And is it right to make such mercilessly rigorous demands and take advantage so insistently of this weakness you know I have for you? But why, if you approve of my advances, refuse me the definitive credential? Ah! We're, we're always told we must fear heaven's judgments. If heaven is all you're worried about, leave it to me to deal with that problem. You mustn't let that hold you back. But, 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 how can I agree to what you want? without, as you would say, offending God. <laughs> it is true that certain pleasures are forbidden by God, but there are ways of getting around this. Depending on one's needs, there is a method of loosening the fetters of one's conscience, setting the purity of our intentions against the evil of the deed itself. I'll explain this mystery some other time. <laughs> All you need to do for now <laughs> is what I tell you. <laughs> Oh, don't be afraid to fulfill my desires. <laughs> I'll be responsible for everything and take the sin upon myself, madame. <laughs> that is a bad cough. Yes, it's misery. Perhaps it would help to suck a piece of licorice. Um, this girl has clung on. I can't seem to shift it. I don't think it would help much to suck anything. Well, that is trying. Yes, unspeakably. Anyway, I can easily help you with your scruples. This will be completely secret, mm. I can assure you. Mm. And the only evil is to make a great noise about things. Mm. Sinning in silence is no sin at all. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> I see there's no alternative but to submit and give you what you want. Ah! <laughs> Clearly, you can't be happy with a promise, and nothing less will do. Yeah. I can't deny I don't want to go this far, mm -hmm. and do it against my better judgment. Yeah. All the same, since you insist on making me yeah. <laughs> and won't believe in my assurances and need more palpable corroboration, I must grit my teeth <laughs> and try to keep you happy. <laughs> and if agreeing to it is a crime, then so much the worse for the man who's behind it, forcing me to it. It won't be my fault. Yes, yes, you. <laughs> leave it to me, madame. Just you will find. Just open that door, would you? And make sure my husband isn't in the gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Why worry about him? Between ourselves, he's very easy to manipulate. <laughs> I got him so he wouldn't believe us, even if he saw us. <laughs> Never mind. Just go. <laughs> and have a really good look round over there. <laughs> Already? Get back under the tablecloth. You're early. Wait till he's finished to be on the safe side. 
I don't want you making any unfair assumptions. He's worse than any devil out of hell. Good God, now don't go jumping to conclusions. Before you change your mind, I think you should be properly convinced. So don't be hasty. I wouldn't want you to make a mistake. There's no one there. Checked all round. Nothing can stop me being happy now. My delight. Slow down. You're letting your desires run rampant. I shouldn't let yourself get too excited. So, my good man, you thought you could deceive me. <laughs> when you decide to give way to temptation, nobody can say that you do the thing by halves. Marrying my daughter, lusting for my wife, I couldn't believe it was really happening. I kept waiting for you to change your tune, but now I think we've had quite enough proof. I'm satisfied in my mind. That's all I need. I did all this against my better judgment. I couldn't think of an alternative. Oh, you mean you think... Oh, please, please. Let's have no fuss. Just take yourself up without further ado. I never meant. Will you get out of my house? No, do get out! <laughs> it's my house now! It won't do you the slightest good to grub up these cheap excuses to get rid of me. Attacking me is more dangerous than you think. I have my way of punishing traitors. Avenging this insult to God and making people who try to throw me out repent! What does he mean? Oh my God, what shall I do? This could be serious. Why? What he just said, I fear that deed of gift was a mistake. What deed of gift? It, it, it's all signed, I'm afraid. But something else he said disturbed me more. What? I'll explain. But first of all, let's see if that attaché case is still upstairs. What attaché case? <laughs> I wish I knew. Oh. Seems to me the first thing we must do is discuss the possibilities. My main worry is the attaché case. It's much more serious than all the rest. Is what's in this attaché case a secret? Argus, that friend of mine who was in trouble, left it with me in strictest confidence. He sought me out before he fled abroad. From what he said, I gather it contained essential private and financial papers. Why did you hand it over to Tartuffe? To ease my conscience. <laughs> I went straight to him, that traitor, and confided in him. 
He persuaded me to give the case to him on the grounds that if anyone he asked, I could deny I had it and so keep my conscience clear of any perjury. Well, I'd say things look black for you. And to be frank, this indiscretion and the deed of gift were undertaken by you much too lightly. You put yourself in pawn to him, and since he does have such great power over you, it was even more unwise to provoke him. Who could have thought that devout facade could hide such double-dealing wickedness? That I took him in when he had nothing. That's it. He's the last religious man I trust. In future, I'll recoil from them in holler and never miss a chance to be their scum. Uh, not another of your tantrums, please. Uh. <laughs> you don't know what a happy medium is. Your <laughs> reason never coincides with reason. You always lurch from one excess to another. You, you realize your mistake, that you were duped by a false piety. But what's the point of trying to make up for it by falling into an even bigger trap and not seeing the difference between men of honor and this contemptible degenerate? <laughs> Just because one thief has, with his veneer of hypocritical austerity, brazenly cheated you, you then assume everyone is like that and genuinely religious people don't exist today. Now leave senseless thoughts like that to atheists. Learn to distinguish virtue and its semblance. Don't be too careless with your admiration and show a necessary moderation. If possible, don't fall for hypocrites. But equally, don't attack true devotion, and if you can't help going to extremes, better to make the same mistake again. Father! Father! Is it true that this wretch Tartuffe is threatening you, Father, forgetting all your kindness towards him, and that with vile, infuriating pride he's turned your generosity against you? Yes my son and i have never suffered so much you leave him to me i'm gonna cut his ears off <laughs> there's no point in holding back against that kind of shamelessness oh yes i'll get you out of this there's only one answer i'm going to blow his head off <laughs> the voice of you now will you please calm down we're living in an age and in a kingdom where violence is never a solution What is happening? What are all these dreadful rumours? Unprecedented things which I have witnessed. The rewards of my generosity. I take a poor man in most willingly. I put him up and treat him like my brother. I load him with new blessings every day. I offer him my daughter and my money. And all the while, this criminal, this pig, nurtures a black plot to seduce my wife and oh. not even content with that disgrace. He dares to threaten me with my own gifts and wants to use the weapons with which my foolish kindliness has armed him to destroy me. <laughs> and take the money I transfer to him and bring me down to what he was a beggar poor boy <laughs> my son mm. I don't believe Tartuffe could possibly do anything so wicked what did you say people are always jealous of a really good man what do you mean? This is a strange household, and it's well known how much he's hated. Hated? What's that got to do with what I've just been saying? <laughs> when you were a little boy, mm -hmm. I told you 50 times, mm -hmm. virtue on oh, earth God, is persecuted ever. Yeah, yeah. The envious may, may die, die, but, but envy never. never. What's that got to do with what's just happened? Oh, they made up all sorts of stories. Well, I already explained. I saw it all. <laughs> There's nothing so 
same genius as a gossip. I'll swing for you yet, Mother. Will you listen? I saw him do these wicked things myself. That's always poison spread by idle tongues. No one on earth can get away from this that. This conversation is ridiculous. I saw him. Do you understand? I saw him. Saw him with my own eyes. I saw him. What I did is describe the seeing. <laughs> one mustn't always go by what you see. Suspicion's human nature, and good is often mistaken for evil. I might I suppose then that the urge to kiss my wife had some religious motive. It's as well not to accuse people without just cause. You should have waited to make really certain. God, God was there a way to be more certain? Should I have waited until in front of me? <laughs> no. You'll make me say things I regret. We're wasting time with all this nonsense, which we should be using to draw up some plans. We can't afford to dream. These are real threats. Do you really think you'd dare to see them through? He wouldn't have the face to bring proceedings. I wouldn't bank on it. He'll work out ways to justify his handiwork against you. And I've seen people caught in a labyrinth once the religious clique is down on them on much less evidence. And like I say, knowing his power, you shouldn't have provoked him. Well, you're right, but how could I help it? Good evening. Yeah. Is Monsieur Vaughan at home? Oh, what does that man want? Go and see. Visitor just now is all I need. How can I control my... Ah, good Hi. evening, dear sister. May I speak to Monsieur Vaughan? He has company. I doubt he can see anyone right now. Oh, I'm not here to make a nuisance of myself. I've come to do him a good turn. Oh, what name is it? Just tell him that I'm here for his own good. On Monsieur Tartuffe's behalf. He's quite polite. He's here on Monsieur Tartuffe's behalf. He says he's doing you a favour. You must see who he is and what he wants. Perhaps he's come about a settlement. How ought I to behave? Well, don't show your anger. If he talks peace, you must listen to him. How do you do, sir? God protect you from your enemies and grant you all I'd wish you. That's a good start. I think it does imply a settlement. Mm. I've always been devoted to your family. <laughs> I was uh, once in your father's service. Oh, sir, sir, I'm ashamed to say, you must forgive me. I don't know who you are or what your name is. My name is Loyal. I'm from Normandy. Oh. I hold the much respected post of bailiff. For 40 years I've been so fortunate, thank God, as to discharge my task with honour. And I'm here, with your permission, sir, to serve you with this writ. What do you, what do you mean? You, oh, you... now, let's not have a scene, sir. <laughs> All I have is this summons here, this eviction order, which says you must forthwith, without delay, remove yourself, your family, your effects. What? Move out. Me? Yes, sir, if you don't mind. As you're no doubt aware, there is no question that at the present moment this house here belongs to our revered Monsieur Tartuffe. From now on, he's lord and master of your possessions by virtue of a contract legally drawn up. Ah, uh, uh, incontestable, which I happen to have about my purse. You've got a nerve. I'm not obliged to deal with you, sir. This is Monsieur Organ's business. Oh, yes, sir. He's a reasonable sort of chap who knows full well a man must do his duty and wouldn't ever want to obstruct justice. But, yes, I know, sir. You'd never dream of playing up. And as an honest man, you'll let me carry out my orders here. You're going the right way to feel my sword laid right across your backside, Monsieur Bailiff. Tell your son to shut up or go away. Now, I'd hate to find it necessary to make a reference to this in my report. Monsieur Loyal, you're not very well named. Oh, I've always been very well disposed towards men of goodwill. That's the reason I volunteered for this particular job, oh. to comfort you, help you out, and make sure they didn't send a man who 
lacking my personal sympathy for you, might have approached the matter less respectfully. What's so respectful about turning people out on the streets? You all have plenty of time. I'll suspend execution of the writ. Till tomorrow. There is just one thing. I'll have to spend the night here with about ten of my men. <laughs> oh, there'll be no noise, no trouble. I will need, and before you go to bed, please, <laughs> it's only a formality, the keys. I guarantee your sleep won't be disturbed. There'll be no unnecessary suffering. You just be ready first thing in the morning to clear out every last household utensil. What? My men will help you. Everyone's hand-picked to render you assistance with the move. <laughs> I don't think one can say fairer than that. And as I've been so lenient with you, sir, I, I would request a corresponding temperance on your part as I go about my duties. Oh, I'd willingly give up my last few coins this second in return for the great pleasure of punching this buffoon hard on the nose. Oh, don't spoil everything. But this is unheard of. My knuckles itch. You better hold me back. You have such a good, broad back, Monsieur Loyal. <laughs> <laughs> a really good hiding might suit you nicely. That kind of talk's actionable, dear. Women are liable to prosecution like anybody else. Right, that's enough. Give us your piece of paper and be off. I'll see you very soon. God bless you all. And may he damn you. And the man who sent you. Well, Mother, am I right? Look at this writ. Now do you understand that he's a traitor? I'm thunderstruck and discombobulated. <laughs> well, I think you're being rather hard on him. This is a confirmation of his goodness, the final proof of his love for his neighbour. He knows that money frequently corrupts, and purely out of charity, he wants to remove this obstacle to your salvation. Shut up. How many more times must I tell you? Come on. Let's sit down and discuss the options. If we were to expose his insolence, surely the contract would be declared null. <laughs> I'm sorry to impose on you like this. An urgent danger made me feel obliged to. A very close friend of mine who's aware of my connection to you, for my sake, has breached the confidentiality owed to the state and passed on information which gives you no choice but to run away. Oh. An hour ago, that swine who for so long has cheated you denounced you to the king. Oh. And amongst other accusations, gave him a case belonging to an enemy of the state whose secrets he said you kept, so neglecting your duty as a subject. I don't know the exact crime you're accused of, but orders have already gone out for your arrest. Oh. And Tartuffe has been told to come as well to help the officer who's been sent to fetch you. That's how the traitor's trying to reinforce his claim to take over all your possessions. It's true, he really is an evil monster. The slightest hesitation could be fatal. Oh. Here is a thousand louis that I brought for you. Oh. My carriage is waiting at the back. Oh. Well, don't let's waste time. This is a thunderbolt, the kind of thing you simply can't escape unless you run. I'll take you to a safe place. Stay with you till you've got away. I don't know how to thank you for this kindness. I'll have to wait before I can repay you. But I ask God to help me to express one day my true gratitude for this rescue. Goodbye. Take care, all of you. Hurry up. We'll try to do whatever's necessary. Not quite so fast, my friends. All right. All right. In the name of the king. You're under arrest. You, Judas.
You've been saving this till last. A criminal delivering the death blow. The culmination of all your betrayals. I am impervious to your insults. I am trained to be tolerant in the sight of God. How remarkably self-controlled of you. How insolently he takes the name of God. I am completely unmoved by your resentment. All I'm attempting is to do my duty. You think this will enhance your reputation? You believe this is honorable conduct? Conduct suggested by the power that sent me surely can't help but be exemplary. Have you forgotten that my charity rescued you from a life of poverty? No. I am well aware of how you helped me. But my first duty must be to the king. The rightful power of this sacred duty has stifled all the gratitude in my heart. To these commitments, I would sacrifice my friends, my wife, my parents, or myself. Imposter! But if this sense of duty is so consuming, how come it held off making its appearance until he caught you molesting his wife? Why don't you put an end to all this whining and be so good as to obey your orders? Yes, I suppose I've waited far too long. And what you say is a timely reminder. I will obey them. Follow me at once. I'm taking you immediately to prison. <laughs> Who, me, sir? Yes, you, sir. Prison, but why? I don't have to explain myself to you. Now, calm yourself, sir. You're living in the reign of a king who has declared war on deceit. A king whose eyes can see into your heart, whom no impostor's cunning can mislead. The sharp perceptiveness of that great mind sees everything in its proper perspective. He's too intelligent to be swayed by passion or to fall into any kind of excess. He's always paid tribute real goodness without letting enthusiasm blind him. And his love for the genuine has never closed his mind to the horrors of bad faith. He's seen through more effective traps than this man set. He never really stood a chance. His perspicacity discerned at once the wickedness of this man's secret heart. He came to denounce you and betrayed himself. By a supremely fitting stroke of justice, he revealed something which allowed the king to identify him as a wanted man, whose long record under another name would fill a book with lists of vicious crime. His majesty also despised him his vile disloyalty and ingratitude to you, in addition to all the other horrors, and only made me his subordinate to see how far his shamelessness would go before we made him make full restitution. The king wants me to strip him in your presence of all your papers, which he lays claim to, and exercises his prerogative to break the contract which you signed to give him all that you owe. And finally, he pardons the crime your friend's exile made you commit as a reward for your support for him during the troubles, just to demonstrate that he knows the time to pay back a favor is when you least expect it, and that he cherishes the deserving and prefers remembering the good to bearing grudges. Thank God. Thank God. What a relief. A happy end. I can't believe the danger's passed. <laughs> What about 
got this then. <laughs> oh, stop it! Don't stoop to mere abuse. Just let him go, poor wretch, to his unhappy fate, and don't add to the guilt which must be crippling him. <laughs> Better to hope this may encourage him to return gladly to the paths of virtue and cause our great king to temper his justice. <laughs> Meanwhile, you must go on your knees to him and show how grateful you are for his lenience. That's well said. Yes. Let us go and kiss his feet and praise him for the goodness of his heart. And that duty acquitted, we must meet another necessary obligation <laughs> and reward a sincere and generous love by celebrating your wedding, Valère. <laughs> <laughs>